Why do you play video games? Do you love to explore giant fantastical worlds? Do you like to climb the competitive ladder and obtain the best loot possible? Are you someone who plays games just to play with others? Or do you prefer to show your dominance and own noobs? Boom and shot! For me, gaming has always been a part of my life, with some of my earliest memories being of me and my brother watching my mom go through playthroughs of Star Fox 64. Gaming became a very social thing for me, as it became something I would do when I visited friends' houses for playdates and birthdays. My early childhood was dominated by Nintendo Party games like Mario Kart, Mario Party, and Super Smash. This, of course, shaped what gaming meant to me, as for me, gaming was always something to do with those close to you. So I go back to my original question, why do you play video games? In 1996, Game researcher Richard Bartle attempted to answer these questions, and he developed what became known as the Bartle Taxonomy of Player Types. He drew a diagram where the x-axis represented a preference for interacting with players or the game world. Meanwhile, on the y-axis, this represented a preference for interaction versus unilateral action, or more simply, acting upon something. Based on this diagram, he divided players into four types. If you enjoy interacting with the game world and mechanics, you're dubbed an explorer. Explorers tend to prefer discovering new areas and immersing themselves in the game world and story. These players also possibly enjoy figuring out what's possible in the game world through interaction, such as discovering glitches or Easter eggs. So someone like Disguise Toast, when he was doing Hearthstone interaction videos, would fit into this category. On the other hand, there are some players who prefer acting upon the game and the mechanics, rather than seeing it as a two-way relationship. These players are deemed achievers. For example, some achievers enjoy obtaining the best loot possible, or getting the best stats. In multiplayer contexts, these players might find fun in being able to climb the ladder and achieving top ranks. Here, you'll also find achievement hunters and completionists. Meanwhile, if you prefer interacting with other players, you'd be called a socializer. These players are those who play for social aspects of games. For some, gaming is a way to interact with the friends that they already have, while for others, gaming might be a way for them to meet new people with similar interests. In single player contexts, socializers may even find enjoyment in meeting in-game characters with colorful personalities. For socializers, gaming might seem like more of a tool for interaction more than anything else. Finally, if you care more about unilateral action with other players, that is, submitting other players to your power, you might fit in the last category, known as killers. If you enjoy the competitive aspect of games, owning noobs, and in some fringe cases, griefing or cheating, then you probably fit more into this category. While this taxonomy was developed around multiplayer games, many of the concepts are important to think about for games of all types as developers should think of how they appeal to all gamer types, as well as what gamer types they're trying to appeal to the most. Good games are able to answer these questions, identifying what mechanics and requirements in their game would appeal to who. In around 1999, there was a test developed known as the Bartle Test of Gamer Psychology based on this taxonomy. It was designed to calculate what type of gamer you are. The test then gives you a score for each gamer type totaling 200%, with no single category exceeding 100%. I actually like the scoring method, as the reality is that players are complex and will always have different motivations. You can take a shortened version of the test online, I'll attach a link below, but I do think the test is limited in quite a few ways. For one thing, each question only gives you two choices, sometimes with the choices being quite unrelated, and it can also be pretty obvious which of the four categories the answer corresponds to. Because of this, I think the test is a bit more unreliable than one which might have questions based on a strongly agree to strongly disagree spectrum, sort of like the political compass test. My test results surprised me a bit, but after thinking about it, I think it does make some sense. I ended up with a 53% explorer, socializer, and killer score, with a 40% achiever score. As an explorer, I do enjoy exploring the world, although I would never say it's my primary reason for playing a game. I also do find some enjoyment from learning about the game and the mechanics, and being able to subsequently teach others about the game. I was surprised I wasn't more of a socializer, as I detailed before, I had always played games just to play with friends. Hell, I'll even play games I don't really like that much, just so I can hang out with the homies. 
I think my killer tendencies stem more from my socializer tendencies. I really enjoy being able to own others with my friends, or own my friends, but I rarely play games simply to beat others. Achiever being my lowest score made the most sense to me, as I was never a big ladder player and I never really cared much about achievements. Hell, if I'm being completely honest, and you can make fun of me for it, but for most of my gamer life, I didn't even really fully beat a majority of games I played. Of course, in psychoanalyzing myself and why I play games, I realized just how complex these motivations are and how most gamers don't really fit into one category alone. What's so amazing about gaming is that there are so many different types of games out there which can appeal to so many different types of people, and different games will scratch different itches for us. So while this framework is rather well known, it of course has its criticisms, and as with anything, it can be improved. John Radoff, a game designer, proposed a new system as an extension of Bartle's taxonomy. On the x-axis, you sorted based on a preference of the number of players in a game, going from single player to many players. Meanwhile, on the y-axis, he noted a preference over the measurement used to communicate to the players that they're winning, with quantitative methods being leaderboards or points and stats, and qualitative methods being emotions, stories, and progression. However, I saw Radoff's analysis as one less based on the players and one more based on games and how they motivate players. In this way, games and mechanics within games can be sorted into different motivations and help developers to understand how they motivate their players. I would say that depending on where a game falls in terms of number of players, a developer needs to be aware and think about how they present qualitative and quantitative measurements of success to gamers in order to appeal and motivate different people. So with all that being said, I ask you, my viewers, why do you play games? I think it's really interesting to take a look at ourselves, our gaming history, and really ask what motivates us to keep going. Why do we continue to play games? You've heard my story, and now I'd love to hear yours. Hey guys, it's James again, and I just wanted to say thank you for enjoying my videos, and hopefully you enjoyed this one as well. I know it's a little bit different from my usual review content, but uh, I just wanted to talk about any sort of gaming topics that really inspired me, and this was one that I'd really been thinking about for a while. But yeah, if you enjoyed that video, feel free to let me know down below what type of gamer you think you are and why. I'd love to hear about your early gaming influences, and if you did enjoy the video, please consider hitting that thumbs up, as well as maybe subscribing to my channel, as it really helps me grow. And as usual, I hope you have a great rest of your day. Peace.